Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Bracha and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Bracha Daf Nunches. Right on top of the Amit says the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Yirmiya ben Elazar, Neskalu Bavel when Bavel received its curse, its klala, Neskalu Lushchena, its neighbors also were harmed as a result and received a an effect of the klala of Bavel. Neskalu Lushchemrin, however, when Shemrin Eretz Yisrael received its klala. In that case, its neighbors actually received benefit as a result. Explains the Gemara. When Babel was cursed, its neighbors were cursed as well. Hashem says regarding Babel, I will make it desolate, I will make it a, a, an estate, an inheritance for the, for the Kipoit, for the Martina. So it was meant to have wild animals and birds roaming it. I will make it into swamps of water. And certainly, since the wild animals were roaming Babel, it also affected and harmed its neighbors. As Rashi says, Oyla Rasha, woe to the wicked, Oyla Shechenai, woe to its neighbor, who is affected as a result of the Rasha. However, regarding Eretz Yisrael, the Skala Shemrain, when Shemrain received a Eklola, Nisbarucha Shechenai, its neighbors were, were blessed, they received benefit as a result. I'll make Shomer into the heap in the, in the field, to plantations of, of vines. So the Goyim, the neighbors, benefited from the fact that Shomer, although uninhabited of its, of its Jewish inhabitants, nevertheless it was still fit for agriculture. Interesting that Rashi Chomish brings, Rashi in Chukaisai, Brings on the pasuk of Vishamamu Aleo Ivechem that that your your enemies will will not find any nachas ruach Merit Yisrael. Apparently, they'll try to come and and and, and plant and and use Eretz Yisrael when the Yidden aren't there. And the true bracha, the true blessing, it won't be it won't be won't be there. It won't be as productive as it was when the Yidden are present. In fact, we see that for many many years Eretz Yisrael was desolate until Yidden started returning to Eretz Yisrael and started making the desert bloom and there was some degree of bracha that, it, that, is, that has come back and is present today. But nevertheless, it appears from this Gemara that even though it perhaps it doesn't have the highest, the highest uh, degree of, of bracha, nevertheless, somewhat, it, is, it will be fit for, for production and for agriculture and the Goyim will derive some form of benefit from Eretz Yisrael. Abraham Rav Nuna Haroya Ichlusei Yisrael. One sees multitudes of Yisrael. Rashi says referring to a, a crowd of six hundred thousand Yidden. Oimer he makes a special bracha. Baruch Chacham Harazim. Baruch the Chacham, the sage of the Razim, of all the secrets of of. He knows everything that's going on. He Yedaya Rashi says Mashabaleiv Kolelu knows all everything that's going on in their in their hearts. Oidek Chacham he sees a group of of Goyim. Of this magnitude, Oimer, he says, the Pasuk, Boyshe Imchem, your mother has shame. And as the Pasuk concludes there, because the end result of the Goyim will be their downfall, so this Pasuk is appropriate. Tonar Aban, Haroya Ichlusi Yisrael, one sees this multitude of 600,000 Yidden, Oimer, Baruch Chacham Arazim. Why? Says the Bryce. She'ein da'atam de'im l'zelazeh, because everybody has their own unique perspective and mindset and their faces, their facial features are dissimilar, everybody has their unique parts of, their unique face the Masha explains that there are actually 600,000 different intellectual aptitudes and he says that's why the Torah was given to 600,000 Yidin who covered, who encompassed this full range, this full this full um, uh, gamut of of uh, of intellectual capacities, and that's why it was it was befitting, it was suitable to 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 have it received, the Torah received by this full spectrum of, of various mindsets to be received, to be understood, to be learned, to be appreciated by all of them. So in this case as well, when we have a group of six hundred thousand yidden, this represents this concept. Of the full range of, of 
of intellect and, and, and uh, perspectives and mindsets and opinions and personalities. So the bracha to Hashem is appropriate in this case. Baruch that Hashem, He's the Chacham of all the, of all the secrets. He, he encompasses all these various into, uh, perspectives and opinions. He knows what's going on in every single person's heart. Baruch Chacham Harazim. It's interesting, there's a Lashon in the Medrash, which is a little different than the Gemara. The Medrash says as follows, Just like his shame, just like their faces are dissimilar, Aim parts his fame, Shavais. Everybody has all, all unique facial features. So too, Kach, Ain the same Shavais. Their perspectives are different. So it appears from the Medrash that the, that the fact that, that their faces are unique, that, that, is, that represents the fact that their mindsets are different. As the Maharal explains, Panim, the word Panim, face, is actually comes, comes from the word Panim, interior. A person's face and, and facial features are a mirror of the person's interior, of his perspective, of his personality, of his mindset. So that's the Pshat and the Medrash. Just as we see the faces are different, apparently their mindsets are different as well. Everybody has their own unique mindset and intellect and perspective just as everybody has their own unique facial features. Continues the Gemara, Ben Zoyma Ro Ochusa Agav Mal Barabais Ben Zoyma saw this multitude of 600,000 people when he was standing on the step of Harabais perhaps they were coming to be a regal. So indeed says the Gemara, Omar Baruch Chacham Harazim and he continued, O Baruch Shebaro who created Kol Elul Shamsheni all these to serve me Rashi says they are chayrish, they are zareh, they plant, they, they, uh, uh, they plow. So they do all the malachis, and I find everything ready. So Ben Zayma, who was exclusively engrossed in learning, he was like that his work should be done by others. Continues the Gemara, Huha Ya'imar, Ben Zayma used to say as follows, Kama Yegiyas Yoga Adam Arishan. Look how much exertion, how many Yegiyas, how many exertions did Adam Arishan exert himself until Ashamasa passed Lech, until he found bread to eat. Kharash, you had to plow with Zora and plant with Katsar and harvest for Omar and bundle with Dosh and to thresh with Zora and to winnow Ubirer and to pick out the grain from the from the from the soilus from whatever whatever was mixed into with Tachan and he ground with Hikid and he sifted with Lush and he kneaded with Afa and finally he he was able to bake and have his bread Vachakachachal and then he ate Vani by me I wake up and he find everything ready. I go to the bakery and it's all ready. He continued and said, yoga Look how much exertion Adam Rishon had to do at Shemotza Begad Lubayish until he had a produced a, a, a article of clothing to wear. First he had to be Gazas to share the wool with Libain and to clean it. Vinipets and to comb it, cover Gazas with Libain, Vinopats and he uh, he, he combed it with hava and he he spun it with arag and he weaved it and there's a girsa which says with tafar and he needed to also sew it together. Va'achakach only after this long process matza begad lilbaish did he produce a garment of clothing to wear. Va'ani, however, by me, look what Hashem, look how Hashem helps me. Ani mashkim amoitze. I get up and I find kol elu misukon lefan. I find the clothing ready. All ready for me. And he continued and he said, Kol umais, all nations, shoytois, they heard your boys, lepesach beis, they come to my home. Rashi says, he was wealthy and everybody would come do business with him. Vani mashkim umay, it's a kol elu and I get up and I find everything available to me. Masha explains that sometimes you need to import items into this city, into this country. So Benzami was saying that he's lucky that look, everything is available to him. Everybody comes and brings him exactly what he needs. Who are you, Aymar? He used to also say as follows, A good guest, what is he meant to say? He's meant to show his Akkaras and his appreciation to his host as follows, Look how much trouble, how much exertion the Balabais did for me. Look how much meat he brought me. Look how much wine he served me. Look how much baked items he brought for me. Everything that he troubled himself was only for my sake, for my benefit. 
So this is true, a true expression of appreciation. What does a bad what does a bad guest say? No, no big deal. How much did he trouble himself already? I only ate one one bread. I only ate one piece. I only drank one cup. So he only gave me very little. Everything that he troubled himself and he prepared. He did it for his wife and, and children. He did it for his family. So he's not showing true appreciation. Now, it's interesting, it could be he has a point that the Balbais was preparing the meal anyways, he was doing it for his family, he only had really very little from it. But nevertheless, Hakar Satoif is, is an expression of appreciation which is a comment on the recipient. He's meant to express in the grandest terms. He's not supposed to minimize and belittle and, and be a might in the toiv that the Babais gave him. Continues the Gemara, Al Oirach Toiv Ma Oimer. Well, how does the Pasak describe this good guest? Zohar Kisaski, Kisaski Poloi. Remember Kisaski Poloi that the, the guest expounded and elaborated on the work of the Baal as a Shoi Ranoshim, that the members of the household sang about him, since he complimented them on this great effort. But on a bad guess, it says, and the Pasuk concludes, He won't see why it's hard to people. He doesn't appreciate the goodness in people. Continues the Gemara, The man in the days of Shoal, Zokein, Baba Ba'anoshim. So what does it mean, Zokin Baba Ba'anoshim? So he was a sage, he was an elderly sage, and he was Baba Ba'anoshim. He was coming with people. So either Zokin means he was older, or Zokin means he was, uh, he was a Chacham. Continues the Gemara by Ish we may shoil zaken ba ba anoshim. So this zaken who was in the days of Shaul was ba he used to come ba anoshim with people. Explains the Gemara Amar Rava v'temer of Zvid v'temer of Aisha. Ze who was a zaken it was referring to Yishai the father of David. Ze Yishai be David. She yotza buchlusa v'nichas buchlusa. He used to go out and in. He used to go out to to battle with achlusa with this multitude of six hundred thousand people. Vidorish Buchlusa and he would give his lecture in front of the same uh, amount of people. Since it says the word Ba'anoshim, which is which is undefined, says the Marsha, apparently referring to the group of people, the same amount of group of people that were found in the <laughs> Continues Gemara of Ish Vimei Shol Zokin Ba Ba'anoshim There was a man in the days of, of Shol A Zokin who was Ba Ba'anoshim What does that mean? Amar Rav Vitemar Zvid Vitemar Vaish Zeh this person was referring to Yishai Avi David, Yishai, the father of David. She yotza b'chlusa, v'nichas b'chlusa. He's going and out to war with nechlusa, with a group of six hundred thousand yidden. V'dorish b'chlusa, and he would give his lecture in front of a nechlusa. Explains the Masha, since the pasuk uses the term ba'anoshim, men, and doesn't elaborate, doesn't explain how many. So we assume it's the same amount as the anoshim, as the group of yidden in the midbar, which was six hundred thousand people. Amarullah, Naktinon, we know this as a halacha in uchlusa bababal. That this bracha applied to an uchlusa does not apply when he has a sighting of the uchlusa in bubble. Tana, we learned in uchlusa, pchusa mishishim riboy, in uchlusa is no less than 600,000 people. Tana Rabban, Haroya Chachmi Yisrael, one who sees an outstanding Jewish scholar. Oimer Baruch Shecholak Michach Masai Baruch Hashem who apportioned from his wisdom Li'ireyav to those of fear him. 
if he sees Chachmei Oide Kechovim, a non-Jewish scholar, Oimer Baruch Shenosan, Michach Masai, Hashem gave from his wisdom, Lebri Yosef, and the Bible Gaon says, Lebasar Adam. So the brach is similar, but has one difference. Regarding Chachmei Yisrael, the brach is, Shecholach Michach Masai, because he portioned, he gave away a chilek, so to speak, of Hashem, of his own Chachma. The Chachma, the spiritual wisdom endowed to a, a Chacham of Yisrael is, is very much connected, so to speak, with Hashem. It is Chalak. It is as though he gave a Chalak of his own Chachma. Regarding the Chachmi of the Chacham, that's merely this worldly Chachma. It's, it's, it's scientific Chachma. It's, it's physical Chachma, etc. So in that case, it's, it's not Chalak. It's not, it's not a high form of Chachma. But rather, Hashem granted him Chachma. He gave him physical Chachma. Worldly Chachma. So therefore, the difference in the, the Lashon. Haroya Malchi Yisrael, one sees a Jewish king, Oyme Baruch Shecholak. Once again, we see the Lashon Cholak, Hashem apportioned, like a chilek, a part, of his honor, Lireyav, to those of fear. Because the Malchus endowed to a Jewish king is, is, resembles, the Malchus is, is like a part of Hashem's Malchus. However, Malchi Oyme Kichavim, then he says, Oymer Baruch Shenosan, he granted, he gave Michvoidai from his honor, like Rui Yosef, and some say, Le Basar Adam. Omer Vichna, Le Oilam Yishtadel Adam, one should, should exert himself, Lorutz, to go run, to pursue, Le Kras Malchi Yisrael, to see the honor accorded to the Jewish king. Below Le Kras, Malchi Yisrael Vad, not only to a Jewish king, El Afilu Le Kras, Malchi Oyde Kechavim, even to go witness the honor that is given to the non-Jewish king. Why? Why is it so important? She'im yiske, because if he'll be zoichem, yavchen, he'll be able to recognize, la'asad lavay, bein malchi Yisrael, between the honor given to malchi Yisrael, as she says, the covet of Melech HaMashiach, the covet of, of, that is given to the schar, the, the covet and the schar that is granted to the oisei mitzvahs, the ones who fulfill Hashem's mitzvahs. So we're able to differentiate, we're able to truly appreciate the honor and the schar given them. To the honor accorded to the kings in this world. We'll have a standard from what to measure, we'll have a benchmark to compare it. And therefore we'll truly appreciate what he's going to witness in the days to come. Continuing more with this story. Rav Sheshach was blind. Have a ka'az l'kuli alma. Everybody is going l'kabuli abi malka to go be makabal upon him the king. To go see the king coming. And become azal bahadayu Rav Sheshis. And Rav Sheshis went along with them. Ashke, I would stuki, the stuki, it's heretic, met Rav Sheshis, blind person going to see the king. Armale, he told him as follows. He insulted him. He said, Chatzvil in Ahara. The, the uh, jugs, the kaden hashlemim, the unbroken jugs, are going to the river to fill. But kigani, the broken ones, lie where they're going. Meaning, what's the point of you going to to uh, go see the king? Amr lay. So Sheshes responded, Tachazi, come, you'll see. The adana tfeminach. That I'm going to have a, a a more accurate perspective than even you. Me, without my eyesight will have a, a better idea of what's going on, of the events, of the, of the reception of the king, even more than you. Says the Gemara, indeed, Cholav Gunda Kamaisa, the first group, the first troop of the king passed. He got up and was noisy. Amrle Hautztuki, said, Tzuki tried to trick him. He said, Asa Malka, the king's coming. That's why there's all that noise. Amrle Hautztuki, like Asa, he's not coming now. Cholav Gunda Tinyana, the second troop passed. Kiko Afshon was noisy. Armale out Stuki. So Stuki again told him, Hashtakasi Malka. Now the king is coming. Armale of Sheshis, no. Loika Asi, he's not coming. Loika Asi Malka. Chalaf Tlisai. The third group passed by. Kisha Saska. And it was quiet. Armale of Sheshis. So now of Sheshis said, Vadai Hashtakasi Malka. Now surely the king is coming. It appears that the Stuki wasn't sure if the king is coming yet. Of Sheshis knew and certainly that the king is coming. Amalei outstuki manolach ha. How do you know this? Amalei, it is for the following reason: the malchusa the ara, because the the royalty in this world, kingdom in this world, is kein. It resembles, 
It's a mirror of Machus al It resembles the heavenly kingdom. And we know that in the Machus al things conduct themselves in this manner. The Ksivah that says, Say your mouth to Barak and Hashem, Ve'ine Hashem oiver, V'ruk doilo, V'chazak mefarek harem, a very strong wind that breaks mountains and Meshav Islam cracks through uh, boulders. L'fnei Hashem in front of Hashem. Loi v'ruk Hashem. But with this wind, Hashem doesn't come. So this is like the first stage. It's windy, it's noisy. This is not, this is not the point in time where Hashem comes. After this strong wind comes the earthquake. Nevertheless, Hashem, not with earthquake comes Hashem. Afterwards comes the fire. Loi Hashem. Killed A low tone of voice comes. And that is a simon, a sign of Hashem's arrival. Similarly here, when it's noisy, when we hear all the pomp, it's a simon that the king hasn't arrived yet. It's only when it quiets down. Now is the time that the king arrives with the full, with the full respect. He's beyond all that noise. He's higher than that. It's quiet. It's full of respect. That's the point when the king came. He got some Malka when the king indeed showed up. Pasach of Sheshesh come Varach Lei. Of Sheshesh made the bracha that is to be said on the king. Amar Lei Havutzduki. Lamad Lei Chazaz Lei to one who you don't see. Come Varachas. You make a bracha to something you don't see. So again he, he insulted him. Oh my Havi Allah. What was his consequence, his result? That Havutzduki. What was the end game of that Havutzduki? Ike the Amri Chavrui. His friends Kachlun Leinai. They poked out his eyes. This was Mida Kineged Mida. Vika the Amri Rav Sheshes, not an Ainu, but Sheshes concentrated on him with his eyes, even though he couldn't see. It's not the power of the eyes. Venasa Galshal Atzomais, and he turned into a heap of bones. Continues the Gemara of Shila, Nagdel who gave Rav Shila. Shila gave Malchus to this to this person, the Baal Mitzris, because he had relations with with a guy. Azal, so this person was upset. Achal bekurtzi v'Malchus, he he slandered Rav Shila by the authorities by the king. Omar, he said, There's one person amongst the Jews that makes judgment, passes dinim without permission, without authority from the Melech. So the Melech sent a, a, an emissary or, or a couple of emissaries, a group of emissaries. He also, so when he came, Amri lay, they told him, when the group came, they challenged Rosh Hashanah, they said, My time on Agdasilahai, why indeed did you pass judgment and, and, and give this, this person his Malkus? Amr Luhu, the Baal Chamarta, because he had relations with the, with the donkey. Amr lay, so they told him, Islach Sadi, do you have a witness? Amr Luhu, in yes. Also, Leo, Idmalek Inish. Leo came and, and in the guise of a person, Va'asid, and he testified. So they asked him, do you have Sa'adi, do you have witnesses? Yes, and Leo came along, so it was a miracle to save Rav Shila. Amri lay, so they told him, Yehochi Barakatolu, if that's true, then he deserves to die. So like in those days, that was the punishment for, for being born a Hamar. Amr lehu, so Rav Shila responded, from the day that we were exiled from our land, we have no permission to do that, to kill. Atun, however, you, my Dabaisun, Avi Dubai, whatever you desire, do with him. Adam Ainibay Vidina. While they were examining his his uh, his case, Pasak of Shilav Amr. The Khasha Magdullah Vagvur. So he said this Pasak. Amr lay said, they told him, My my what are you what are you saying? Amr Lahuakamina. This is what I mean to say. Brih Rahmana Baruch Hashem, the Yah Mahusa Ba'ara, that he established the royalty, the kingdom in this world, Kain Mahusa the Rikia. To resemble the heavenly kingdom, and he gave you power of rachmedina and the love of judgment. So he complimented them. Amru, so they responded, Is it so dear to you? You cured the malchus of the honor of the kingdom. Kuliai so much. kulfa. So as a result, they gave him this kulfa, this rod. dundina. They gave him the authority to pass judgment. This was a, a symbol. They gave him this. Rod, as a gesture, go ahead and you can do, you can perform dinim judgments. Ki Avanafik, when Rav Shila was leaving, Amalehu Gavra, so this person who was punished by Rav Shila, 
told him, Avad, Rachman, Anisa, Lashakri, Hachi, does Hashem perform miracles to Lashakri, to liars in this manner? Why did you merit that Al Yonovi came and helped you and made a, a nace for you? You're a liar. You told them that I, I, I did something with a donkey, which was untrue. Omar Lay, Sir Shil responded, Russia, Lav Chamri Ikru. Aren't Goyim called Chamerim donkeys? Like the flesh of donkeys is their flesh? So it was actually pretty accurate when I said that you had relations with the donkey. Chazi Sir Shila saw the Ka'azal Emeru that this man was, was going to tell them the Karinu Chamri that Rashil called them, referred to them as donkeys. Omar Sir Shila says, one second, Hi Roidafu, he's a pursuer, he's a Roidaf. He's, he's going to, he's causing me death. Vatayur Amra, the Torah instructs, in Bala when one is coming, threatening to kill you, Hashkim Laharge, hasten and get up and kill him before he has a chance to do it to you. If so, Machi Bekufa Bekatli, he hit him with this rod and indeed he killed him. Omar Sir Shila will continue and he said, Hoyu Bisavid Lunisa, since a miracle occurred to me by Hikra as a result of this Pasuk, Lecha Hashem Agdul Vagvura, Tarish I will make a drasha and expound on this very pasuk. L'cha Hashem Agdula, Zumasa Beresh is referring to the creation of the world. Dula denotes the the Dula, the 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 the, the midas hachesed, the the power of creation. V'chein Roi Ma'isa Gedolei Saden Cheker, referring to the the world. V'agvura, so the next word, L'cha Hashem Agdula, V'agvura, strength, power, the Yitzchus Mitzrayim. The gvura, the strength of the, of the makis that Hashem did to Mitzrayim. But the Ferris, splendor, Zucham Olavano, the son of the moon, Sha'amdala the Yeshua, which were made to stand static for Yeshua. Shnema Vayidam, Hashem Ashvayrech Ahmad, son of the moon, remained standing in place. So this is the Nais that was performed for Yeshua. And uh, this brought about the Ferris, splendor. Everybody heard about it and his. And his his name, his fame spread. The Pasuk continues, the Hashem Abdullah Agvur, at first, Vahanetzach. What is the meaning of Vahanetzach? Says the Gemara, Vahanetzach Zuma Palosa Shal Raimi. It's a downfall of Rome. Vahenu Oimer, Vahyez Nitzchon of Godai. So Netzach means, means a triumph, that Hashem will triumph on, on Rome. Vahoid, glory Zuma Chemes Nachli Arnon. This is the Mohammed, the Mohammed that happened by the Nachli Arnon, the canyons of Arnon. As the Gemara explained earlier, in the parak Shanam Al Kenny Yomer B'Seif Hashem, Mechamas Hashem, as Rabbi Sufa, that was the whole story with the with the uh, canyon where where the Yidden were going to walk through the deep canyon, the Goyim were hiding on top, going to harm them, and the Aaron flattened everything out and crushed the Goyim that were hiding there. So the Hoid is referring to this nace of Nachli Aaron. Ki Choyl Bashmaim Varetz, that's referring to the nace that happened. That the story was that the, the stars heated things up and the Goyim had to, had to go into the Nachal Kisha and to cool off and eventually they were swept away by the Nachal. So this is a nace, which is referred to in the words by Shemayim Varetz, from heaven, in the heaven and the earth, because the nace began with the Kachavim in, in heaven and concluded in the Nachal Kisha and down on the earth. The kingdom is yours. So Muhammad Amalek, the Khenu Aimer Kiyadat Kiska, that eventually when Amalek will be vanquished, the Malchaz Hashem will, will, will see its its completion. Hashem will display his sovereignty at that point. What is the final word of the Pasik Lakhoil Luraish? L'chay l'roish, Amar of Chana Barava, Amar of Yechana, it's coming to teach you. Afilu reish kargisa. Even the, the one that's, that's in charge of the, of the uh, irrigation, the ones that dig the irrigation pits, even the one that's in charge of them. Min shamayo monole. From heaven he was appointed. Rashi explains, L'chay l'roish means, everybody, that is a roish, l'choy roish. Everybody has any position of authority. Not only a king or somebody really on a high position, even a, a simple person that, that is in charge of the, of the diggers. L'choy roish. He is also appointed by Hashem. Hamisnase. Hashem is the misnase. Hashem is, is sovereignty. Affects this as well. 
Hashem appoints this person as well. Masnisa Tana and the Brayse will learn to share their Akiva. A little bit of a different pshat in this pasuk: El Chosh Hamagdulos Zekriyas Yamsuf, VeAgvuro Zomakas Bechoros, VeTeferes Splendor Zomatan Torah, VeNetzach VeNetzach Zor Yishalayim, VeHoyd and Glory Zobeis Hamidosh. So, in conclusion, we learned about the brachos of Uchlusei Yisrael when a person sees the group of six hundred thousand Yidden, the brachos Baruch Hacham Harazim. Hashem knows the secrets. That is contained in all their hearts. If this person sees a chusay oivde kachavim, then he says boy sheimchem. If a person sees chachmei Yisrael, he makes a bracha of shecholak michachmasei lireiv. Chachmei oivde kachavim, shenasam chachmasei lebasav adam. He sees malchei Yisrael, he says shecholak michvoide lireiv. He sees malchei oivde kachavim, he says shenasam michvoide lebasav adam. And indeed, the sheishes made this bracha. And he had the whole back and forth with the tzuki, and he was able to discern when the king will come, without even seeing it, because the machusa the ara, the royalty in this world represents, resembles the machusa the rikia. Rabban explains in Chumash that the concept of of malchus is really exclusive to Hashem. Hashem is really the only melech in the world, and therefore the whole concept of of malchus in this world. Is merely a main of that malchus above. Hashem grants in a small in a small way that there should be a, a semblance of this of the heavenly malchus in this world. But really, the malchus, the royalty found in this world, is a is a manifestation of really of Hashem's kingdom. And therefore, we certainly understand why the system is very similar. The system of royalty in this world must reflect a mirror. The heavenly malchus, since it's it's merely an extension and an establishment, and a manifestation of Hashem's malchus in this world. Tana Rabban will let Tana Haroya Bati Yisrael be Yishuvan. One sees the the ho- the homes, the glorious homes of of Klal Yisrael be Yishuvan when they are inhabited. Rashi says, "Can go and be Yishuv by Yisheni when they came back after the Chur after the Golis, the time of the second Beis Hamikdash, and they were sitting with their royal homes and inhabited and in tranquility." Oimer Baruch Meitzav Gvul Almana establishes the Gvul, the boundaries of the Almana, because Yidin and Golis are considered to be an Almana, Hoysel Kalmana. So when they return to Israel and they get reestablished, Baruch Hashem who reestablished the Gvul of Almana, Berchurbanan. However, in its in its ruins, Oimer Baruch Dain Emes. But the Chomri Shuvan we see the homes of the Goyim, the grand homes of the of the non-Jews, be Yishuvan, inhabited, Oymer Beis Geyi Misach Hashem, the home of the Hori, when Hashem will uproot, Berchobanan, when he sees them ruined, Oymer, Kel Nekomes Hashem, Kel Nekomes Hafi Hashem, took revenge on the Goyim, Ula of Rav Chizda, because of Urcha, they were walking on the road, Ki Matu HaPischa, the way Rav Chanabar Chanloi, they came to the Pesach, the opening of the home, the former home, of Rav Chanabar Chanloi, Naga Rav Chizda V'Isnach, Rav Chizda led out alongside, Amalei Ula, Michael Misnach, why are you sighing? Then Rav teaches us, a side breaks half a body. He breaks your your thigh, so your waist. So apparently, it breaks a person at the halfway point. The entire body gets affected and is broken by a side. So you see that an anacha, a side breaks, it melts the entire heart. Amalei. So Rav Chiza said, "You're wondering about my sigh. Hey, chiloi isnach. How could I not sigh when I when I witness this 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 tragedy? Based on the have a beshitin of yaisa, this home that used to belong to Rav Chana Bar Chanaloi." That contained, that featured shitan afyaisa be mama sixty bakers during the day, v'shitan afyaisa belayla, and the sixty bakers at night v'afyon nochom and the tzorich they would bake for anybody, for everybody what they need v'loy shakal yadam in kisa and Rav Chana would keep his hand in his purse a whole time, the savar he he would think perhaps dilma asi ani bar tovim a poor man the son of of a of a Bartayim, a lost Jewish family, and, and he needs a an handout. And he's coming for tzedakah. I don't want to embarrass him. I don't want to make him, make him prolong wait. And therefore, 
as soon as long as it takes you to get to the purse, come aksif. He'll be embarrassed. So the longer he has to wait around, the longer his embarrassment. Therefore, I want to keep my hand in my in my purse so that it's readily available immediately when the ani comes. I can give it to him without any hesitation to minimize his embarrassment. So this was his custom of, of Chana's minak. Visu, and not only this, Visu of Absichle, Abba Babila, Abba Ruchsa. In addition, this home had four doorways to the four directions. Have a psychically arba babi had four open doors la abba ruchsa to the four directions. The four directions, the alma of the world. Behold Abba Ayal Kafan, whoever would go in there hungry, Nafik is Savaya, would come out full. Baba Shadali Khiti Visari, they would put out wheat and barley, Mishnah Bitsuris in years of famine. Abra, they put it outside. Why? The Khoman the Ksifa Milsal Mishka, be mama, whoever is embarrassed to take it during the day, Asi would come with Shaka Baleo, take it at night when always watching. So a home that was full of stock of a chesed and generosity, Hashta Nafal Batala, now is lying in ruins. But like Islach, you don't expect me to sign. Amarle. So Ula responded. Hachiyam Rav Yechanan. This is Rav Yechanan told us. Miyoyim Shachar Beis Hamidosh. This is Rav Yechanan said. Miyoyim Shachar Beis Hamidosh. Nigzer Gzera Obatein Shat Tzadikim. From the time of Churm Beis Hamidosh, a decree was decreed. A Gzera was Nigzer on the homes of Tzadikim as well. Sheyichem that they should be destroyed, just like the Beis Hamidosh. Shnei Mabazna Hashem Tzvaka Yisim Loi Batim Rabim L'Shama Yiu. Many homes will be desolate. Doilim Batoyu Ma'in Yeshev. Big and good ones. Without inhabitants, so even the homes, specifically the homes of tzaddikim. Apparently, that's the reference to gedolim v'toivim. Homes of tzaddikim specifically have a zero to be destroyed. Hashem will restore them to the former state and will be inhabited. Once who trust in Hashem, like the mountain of Tzion. The Masha points out. That this pasuk we, we, is a little perplexing because why 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 are we comparing? Why are we saying that they trust Hashem just like the Har Why are we comparing trust Hashem to to a mountain? Apparently, from this correlation, the Gemara derives the following drasha that the pasuk means to teach us what is the connection between Aboyt Hashem Kahar Tzion Ma Har Tzion just like Har Tzion Asta Gashbochal Achziru LeJishuvay Hashem will restore it to its former state. And it will be inhabited once again. So we trust Hashem just like Hartzion. We have promised and guaranteed that it will be restored. So too the homes of Tzadikim will be restored to the former glory. So Baitchim is referring to the Tzadikim. The Baitchim of Baiteach Hashem that their homes will be restored just like Hartzion. So this was his consolation. Eventually, Hashem is going to rebuild it. Chazi said, he noticed, that his mind wasn't at ease. Okay, so in the future, Hashem will rebuild things. But now, what about now? It's lying in ruins. Armale, so he responded with another thing. He said, It's sufficient that a servant should be like his master, meaning just like the Beis Hamidosh is lies in ruins. So it's fitting that the, the home of the servant shouldn't be in a, in a in a better state than the home of the master. So that is the reason why the Batim of the Tzaddikim are indeed ruined and are lying with Tala, lying ruins at the time, during the time that the Besamilish lying ruins. So this gave him a new perspective, a new, a new context, a new, a new focus on things. You can expect that the servant should be in a better position than his master. Haroya Kivir Yisrael, one of sees graves of Yidin Oimer, Borach Hashem Yotze Eschem Medin Hashem, who has created, formed you in, in Din with judgment, Vizan Eschem Medin, and sustained you in, in judgment, Vikilkal Eschem Medin, and provided for you your livelihood, Medin, in judgment, Vasav Eschem Medin, and gathered you back up to Shamayim Medin, Vasav Akimcham Medin, and eventually will stand you up again, Medin. Marva Darvina Messiahba, he would conclude this bracha Mashad of Yechnan in the following manner Vyoidea Mispel Kuchem. Hashem knows all your numbers. 
He's going to eventually revive you. to sustain you. Baruch mechay hamesim. So this is a bracha on Kivar Yisrael. Kivar Yisrael. If you see his non-Jewish graves, I mean, boy shimchem and bar should be a mother. Omer Shumalevi. Haroyes chaveroy laachash leshimyai. One sees his friend. Tosis points out it's a friend who is chavivalov, who is dear to him. So if it's it's already thirty days since he's seen him last. If it's after 12 months, why is this bracha appropriate? Because in every 12 months, it's contained in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, when every person is judged whether he will live or die. So when he sees his friend survived the Yom and Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, days of judgment, makes a special bracha on account of Hashem having spared him from death. Baruch Machai HaMesim kept him alive. A person who passes away doesn't get forgotten from the heart. It takes 12 months. I was forgotten like, like a mace who was forgotten from the heart. I was like a, a lost vessel. Rashi explains that after 12 months, the owner of the, ve- of the lost vessel gives up on it. He's miyayish. And uh, that is the connection between the shikha of a mace, which also takes 12 months. Rav Papa, Rav Huna, Rav Shohav, Ka'az, Rav Baruch, they walk on the road, Pogu, Baby, Rav Chanina. They met Rav Chanina, Breda, Rav Ika. Homer, Leis, they told him, you're such a, a greater scholar, Ba'adid, Chazinach. When we see you, Barachina, Allah, we make two brachas on you. Barachina, Allah, Tarti, we make two brachas on account of this momentous occasion. Number one, Baruch Hashem Cholak Mechachmas Eilurayaf. Hashem gave away from His Chacham to Yirayaf, those who fear Him, because you are a Chacham Gadol, and also Shechiyano, Veshechiyano, because He was a a Chaver who was Chaver on them. So we made two brachas. Amar Lo Usi responded, Anon Nami, when I see you, Anon Nami, me too, give it the Chazal Sincho. Since I see you, Chash Vesinu Lavchei Alavai Kishitim Ribu. You appear to me, you are chasha to me, you are significant to me. You have the same chashibus and significance. Chash v'sinchu ilavoy, you are chashav to me. Kishitzin river on Beis like 600,000 yidin. O barichna alaycho tlosa. And therefore, as a result, I make three brachas. Hanach tarti, these two that you mentioned, which is baruch shecholak mi chachmasay lireyav, and shechiyanu. And also, in addition, I say, Baruch Chacham Harazan, the sage of the secrets. Why is this bracha appropriate for these people? Explains the Ramban that the point of the bracha, Baruch Chacham Harazan, represents the fact that Hashem knows all that's going on in the hearts and minds of the entire spectrum of of people, of, of intellectual aptitudes, and of perspectives, and mindsets. So too, says the Ramban, sometimes a leader in Klai Yisrael could be of such high stature. For instance, he brings the Chazal that says, by Yeshua, he was called Ish, a man, a Ruach boy, a spirit was contained in him. And, and the Chazal say, he was, he was able to relate to the spirit of every person. He can relate to everybody's personalities. He was an a very great neshama who encompassed everything and everybody. So too, he referred to these chacham in the same manner. You're so great. You encompass everything. All the, all the intellectual levels of people. You also deserve the bracha of Baruch HaCham HaRazam, the sage of the secrets. Since you also relate to all the intellects and all the perspectives and all the, all the mindsets of the individuals. Okay, Amr Lay, they told him, Hakimas Kulehai, you're so smart. Meaning, how did you recognize in us this capacity? So, the Farshim say, it's through seeing the, the parts of, through the facial features. He had, a, he had an insight just by looking at their faces. So, this, this was a, a very expression of a great a degree of Chachma that he expressed. Just by merely seeing them, he was able to see their, their full capacity and their abilities. As a result, says the Gemara, Yovi Be'inayu, there was some sort of effect of, of Ayin Hara here, and they placed their eyes on him, Vishachif, 
and he passed away. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rabbi Shoban Levi, Haroya Sabahaknim. If one sees a person from these Bahaknim people who are, who have these, these red, red spots, or something strange and unusual, Oimer Baruch Meshan Habriyas, bless Hashem who diversified his Briyas, his creations, by creating these strange and unusual phenomena. Mesve, we have a Brisa which tells us that the appropriate Bracha is not Meshan Habriyas, but rather Dinamis. Says the Bryce, Ros Akushi, if one sees a, a person who's very black, Vesagircha, very red, Vesalafkin, very white, Vesakipeach, who is disproportionately obese, he's obese and looks very short, Veshananos, somebody who's, who's a midget, Veshadronikoi, somebody with a crooked mouth, so these are strange and unusual, Oime Baruch Meshan Esabris, Esakitea, however, if he sees a person whose hands were amputated, Vesasuma, blind man, Vesuyoresh, one whose hair, is married with a chiger, person whose foot was amputated, with a mukeshchin, full of boils, as vahaknim. One of these people who have these red marks, oimer, boruch daina emes. So not mishana bris, but rather daina emes. So how do we resolve this theory? So it's more like kash, it's not difficult. It depends what type of person. Hamimei imay. In the case that we said, that we, we, we apply the bracha of mishana bris, that is a case where he was born that way. And therefore, the bracha is Mishana Habriyas. Hashem diversified his creations. He, he created, he, he had this person born in a strange, in a strange, looking strange, strange. Ha, oh, basa des yalat. But the Bryce is speaking about that this occurred to him later. This phenomenon arrived later. Therefore, it was as a result of, of judgment that was passed on him. And the bracha is baruch dynamis, the judge of truth. They cannot approve it to you from a diuk. The ktani dumi de kiteya. The Bryce elicits together. He lists Bahakna together with the amputated person. And that certainly happened later. Shema Minot, it's a proof that the Brisa here is listing situations that occurred later. And therefore the Brachi here is dynamics. Tana Rabbanon, Haraya Pil, if he sees an elephant, Kaif, a monkey, a kifa, an owl, Oymer Baruch Meshana Sabriyas. Hashem who diversified his, his creatures. Since these things look very, uh, they're, 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 they look very strange and they're not nice looking. Therefore, the bracha meshan habris is applied to them. The Meiri says these three animals, their, their facial features are have have some sort of similarity to the human human face, and therefore this is like a distorted human face. And the bracha is meshan habris. Hashem diversified and changed his creatures. Continues the bracha. Rob b'yis toivos. He sees nice creatures. B'lon is toivos nice trees. Oimer Baruch Shekochale Bailome, Baruch, blessed, who contains, who has this in his, in his world. Shekochale, that it is like this, Bailome, in his world. So, in summary, regarding the Brachas, recited on various things, we began with Bate Yisrael Bishuvan, one sees the, the, the homes of, of the Jews that were restored to their glory. He makes a Bracha, Baruch Meitzev Gulamana. He sees Basi Yisrael Bechurbanon. He says Baruch Dain Emes. He sees the homes of the Goyim Bishuvan. Beis Geyim Yisach Hashem. He sees the homes of the Goyim Bechurbanon. Kel Nekomes Hashem. Kel Nekomes Sefiya. He sees Jewish graves. Kibri Yisrael. He makes the Baruch of Asher Yotzer Eschem Adin. He sees a friend. A good friend. A dear friend after 30 days. Shechiyon Mikimanu. After 12 months. Mechayim Eisim. Mechayim Hamesim. If he sees a very black person. Very red. Etc. Or, for instance, a elephant, a monkey, Baruch Meshan Abriyas. He sees one who, who endured judgment, retribution, a kiteya amputated, summa blind, Baruch Daina Emes. If he sees Briyas Toivis, pleasant and nice looking creations, Shekacha Baruch Shekacha Loi Bi'oi Lomai. Continues the Gemara Allah Zikin. We learned in the Mishnah that if one experiences Zikin, he makes the brach of Baruch Shekaychay Gbrosim El Oilam Hashem's power and strength fills the world. So what exactly is Zikin? My Zikin. Amar Shmuel Koych V'Deshavet A star that looks like like a long rod. Some say this is a comet. So this is the Zikin that requires the brach. V'Amar Shmuel Nihirunli Shvile Deshmaya They are clear to me the pathways of heaven. Astrology I'm so familiar with it. Like the pathways of my hometown of Nardor. So I'm very well versed 
in the goings on in heaven, except Levar me Koichvedeshavet, except for this phenomenon of the Koichvedeshavet of this comet. Lo Yedana Maniu. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Ugmiri the Gemara says we have a tradition. The Lo Yover Kisla. This comet never collides with Kisla, which was one of the constellations. The Yover Kisla, because if that would happen, Chor Alma, the the effect would be so devastating and the world would be annihilated. Says the Gemara, is that so? That doesn't collide with Kisla of Akhazina the Avar. It appears, yes, to pass through it. Says the Gemara, it's a false impression. Zivihu the Avar, it's only its glow, the glow of the comet, not the comet itself. It's only the glow that passes through. Meschazik the Avar, it appears like it itself passed through, but it's really a false impression. Ravunu the Shuamar, where does the false impression come from? Vilun the Mekarea, part of the Shemayim called Viloin, gets ripped open. The Megalgal, some have this gear, so it gets Megal gets rolled up. And as a result, Omechsi Nahur, the Rekia, there's a shine coming out from Rekia, which is behind the Vilon. And this gives the, somehow the false impression, like the comet is colliding with Kisla. But it's really not so. Rav Ashi Omar, where does this false impression come from? Koichu, the Akam Hagisa, the Kisla. It happens when a star gets uprooted from one side of the constellation of Kisla. The Chazi Chavri Machis and his friend, another star on the other side, sees what's happening, Umivis, and he gets scared, he thinks that he's being attacked by his friend, Umechsi Kamada Ovar, and therefore as a result, one star getting dislodged, the other one getting agitated, somehow this gives the impression that the comet has attacked Kisla, but it's really only a false impression. Continues the Shmuel Rami, he has the following contradiction. Ksiv, it says in the Pasuk, in Eoiv Oise, Hashem makes Osh, Ksil Vekima, Ksil and Kima, two mazalas, two constellations. So we have Ksil and then Kima. Uksiv and another Pasuk says, Oise Kima Vekil. Here, Kima comes before Ksil. How do we explain it? Says the Gemara, they're both equally important, and therefore, one place we do it in this order, another place in a different order. That is a remez that denotes, that indicates that they both have equal power. Hokeitzah. Rashi explains that Ksil reigns over, over heat in the world. Kima over cold in the world. Ksil reigns in the summer. Kima in the winter. Says Igmar. They both need each other. They, they need to act as a counterbalance. And they're both equally important. That explains the change in sequence in the Psukim. Because they're both equally important. Okay, it's the Malay Chamashal Ksil. If not for the heat rooted source in Ksil, which reigns over heat, when the sky and oil, the world wouldn't, wouldn't survive if Pnaitina Shal Kima, as a result of the coldness of Kima. So Ksil acts as a counterbalance to the immense cold of Kima. And the same thing in the reverse. The Malay Tsina Shal Kima, if not for the, the Tsina, the coldness coming from Kima, in the sky and oil, the world wouldn't survive if Pnei Chamashal Ksil. Because of the heat of Ksil. So we need both of them. Continues the Gemara Ugmiri, we have a tradition. Ilav Uksa the Akriva. For the fact that the, the tail of the of the scorpion, which was which was part of the of the um, the constellation of Kima, which as we said reigns over cold, coldness. So for the fact that his tail is lying the Manach bin Har Dinur in the river of fire to to Warm it up a bit. If not for that, call manda vatrikali akra. Anybody who is stung by a, by a scorpion, who uses the power of, of coldness to attack, loy have a A person wouldn't survive. It's only because it's it's balanced out a bit with this with this fiery river that a person can survive the cold sting of a scorpion. Says the Bahainu to come and leave. Now we understand why. The Ebeshir tells Eve as follows, Has kasher, ma'adan is kima. Do you tie up the knots of the mazal kima? Oymoishcha is ksil. Tevateach, do you loosen up the, the shackles of the constellation of ksil? So, we're referring to kima in a knotted sense. It's knotted up because that represents heat, represents cold, which tends to contract. However, regarding ksil, it refers to it as something loose, since it represents heat, which tends to expand. So we see indeed that kima reigns over cold and ksil over heat. Omar, my kima. What is the definition? Why is it called kima? Omar Shmuel, kamea kochi. 
It appears like a hundred stars. So Kima is like Kimea, it looks like a hundred stars. Amrila, some say the Mechamfi, the stars look like they're gathered together, but Amrila, the Mevajan, look like they're dispersed. My Ash, the Pasuk before said, Oisa Ash, Silva Kima. What exactly is this Ash? Amr of Yudah, Yoisa, it's Yoisa. My Yoisa, what is Yoisa? Amrila, Zonif Tolev, Amrila, Resha, the Egla. So this is part of a constellation. We have a Machlekes, some say it is the tail of the constellation of Tleh. And some say it is the head of the egla, of the mazel of egel. Says the Gemara, Umestavar, it appears, Kemanda Omar, Zan of Tola. It's reasonable to say that Ash is actually shaped as a tail and is the tail of the mazel Tola, which is the mazel Kima, the mazel of cold. The Chsiv, as it says, Va'ayish, Alboneo Sanche. Ayish on its children. Needs consolation. Needs to be consoled. Alma, apparently, Chasra, it's missing something. It's missing his children. Umeschazio Kitarfa, the Torah. It looks like it was it received blows from a hammer to, to close up a, a, a gap, something that was missing in it. Why is it following the Mazel of Tle? So it's the tail of Tle and it's following, it's pursuing the Mazel of Tle because it's, it has a claim. The Amrla, because it's claiming to the Mazel of Tola, Havli Bana, give me back my children, give me back my stars that you took. Says the Gemara, what, what does it mean, give me back my stars? Shabashash, Agash Borchu. Bikesh, Love, and Mavid, Loyal, and Shem wanted to bring the Mavid of the world. Notal, Shtekel Chav Mi Kima, he took two stars out of Kima. So Kima is the constellation of coldness, and apparently it's connected to water as well. So through that gap, the water came out for the Mavid. And as a result, Mabel came to the world. So he brought the Mabel Oilam, Hevi Mabel Oilam, by taking out two stars from Kima. Okshabish and Saisma wanted to close it back up again. Where did he get the stars to close it back up? Not Meosh. He took two Kachavim from Ayish, from this tail, the Sosma, and using those two stars, he closed up the gap in Kima. He says, well, Why do you have to take from Ayish to close up Kima? But why doesn't he just return those same, same two stars that he took from Kima? A pit can never be refilled completely with his own dirt. Inevitably, some of the dirt gets lost. So it's not enough to fully close it up. So therefore, he needs to take two stars from Aish. Inami, another reason why he couldn't use its own stars in Kategor and Asa Sanegar. A Kategor, a prosecutor, can become a defender of Sanegar. Since Kima, the constellation, the mazel of coldness, apparently connected also to water, this mazel tzleh, is, was the cause of the punishment. So it itself cannot be the catalyst for the end of the punishment. And therefore we need two other stars. Says the word of the Why can Hashem just create another two stars? New stars. Why do you have to take away from Aish? Says the word Enko Chadash Tachas Hashemesh. There's nothing new under the sun. Hashem, since the days of creation, beginning of the world, Hashem doesn't create any, no, any more new phenomenon. Omer of Nachman, Indeed, Hashem eventually will return the two stars that were taken from Aish, which was the tail of the Mazel of Kima, who is pursuing it, but eventually Hashem is going to restore it. Shanamar of Aish, Alboneo Sanchem, Aish, on his children will lead, or will lead his children, will have its full, its full house once again.